Hey Zen friends, it's Casey. I am the animal care manager and vet tech here at Zen Habitats. And today I want to talk about why I think reptile skin and scales is so fascinating. It has so many purposes and I can't wait to share them all with you. This might be a little bit more sciencey than some of our other videos, so I hope that it's not boring and you enjoy it and learn something from it. <laughs> features that it can do. Um, so we'll get started with the top of the list, which everyone should be very familiar with, is UVB absorption. The purpose of absorbing the UVB is to um, turn inactive vitamin D into active vitamin D3. And that helps the intestines absorb the crucial calcium that our reptiles need. The next purpose of reptilian skin and scales is camouflage. So this is our animal's first line of defense. Uh, we have a great example with one of our guys here. His name is Ollie and he is our Chihuahua gecko. Hi friend. Ollie is a Chihuahua gecko, also sometimes called a mossy prehensile tiled gecko, and that is because of their crazy mossy patterns. So these guys, their first line of defense is to pretend that they're not a gecko. If you can't see me, you can't eat me. All right, Ollie, let's go back. <laughs> The next thing that I want to talk about is locomotion, specifically in snakes. So I don't know if you've ever noticed that the scales on the snake's belly look a little bit different than the snakes on the rest of its body. And that is because those scales grip onto tiny imperfections in the surface that they're crawling on and it pushes them forward and makes them move, so locomotion. So for an example, let's just pull out little Miss Phoenix so you can get an idea of what that looks like. So like I said, Phoenix, being a snake, has those belly scales that all snakes have. And just to, without stressing her out, I just wanted you to take a look and see how they are different. So the belly scales are more long, where the other scales are, you know, like the diamond shaped and such. Oh, there we go. <laughs> she is done, she's ready to go. She's, or she's trying to get to the camera, I don't know. <laughs> the next thing I wanna go over is thermoregulation. So, Reptiles being cold-blooded animals do not self-regulate and they need sunlight and warmth to thermoregulate themselves. So when they are basking, that is considered a direct absorption of heat. And if they are getting heat from say like a rock or their hide, that is an indirect absorption of heat. A great example of this is our Zen cave. Rosie has two of them in here with those slate tops. It's using that indirect contact to heat up her underside. The next thing I want to talk about is signaling. So I want to talk about not so much display signaling, but signaling through pheromones. So there are glands in the reptile skin that produce these pheromones. Some of the reasons why these reptiles may use this type of signaling via pheromones is to mark their territory, find a potential mate, or to signal that there's danger to other um, members of their species. The next thing I want to talk about is color. So I kept this separate from camouflage because I think it is its own thing. So in reptiles, color can be used um, for sexual selection. So a female is going to be more attracted to that brighter male. A great example is in collared lizards. And this is because of sexual dimorphism. That basically means that the male and the female of the same species can be different sizes, different colors, different shapes. Another feature of skin that's really cool that is found in snakes is these infrared heat sensing pits on their face. So you've heard the term pit viper, this is where it comes from. So animals that have these pits are able to detect um, warm blooded animals movement in the dark and can strike when appropriate. The next thing I want to go over is shape. So. Depending on where the animal is from, will determine on what kind of shape they'll be. So for example, in blind snakes that spend the majority of their life underground, they have kind of smooth, silky, slippery scales and a very streamlined body. 
Okay, moving on to the next thing is water transport. So reptiles are so good at conserving water and a lot of this has to do with their skin. So their skin is made up of the same keratin that our skin is made up of, but it's heavily keratinized, which means it's nice and thick and it makes it watertight so that water stays in. The last purpose I want to go over is toxin production. This isn't a reptile, it's an amphibian. I'm talking about poison dart frogs. So what these frogs do is they eat insects that have this toxin and then they are able to then secrete that toxin out of their skin. The four species in the genus Philobates are the most poisonous frogs in the world. all of the things that skin can do, I want to talk about some specialized skin and scales that some reptiles have. So the first one I want to talk about is rattles from rattlesnakes. Rattlesnakes are not born with a rattle. When they're born, they have just one little segment of the rattle, and each time they shed, a new segment is added. These segments are hollow, so it's like, what, how do they make sounds? They actually do that by shaking their tail 50 to 100 times per second, and that's what creates the rattle we hear. The next four kind of adaptations I want to talk about all kind of have to do with the defense mechanism or attracting mates or just saying, get out of my territory. And these will be crests, spines, flaps, and frills. So crests we're most familiar with on our crested geckos with these awesome crests up the head. Spines, a great example is on our bearded dragons. Or this horny toad who's got all these cool spikes and stuff. Flaps is something that um, iguanas have. They have this dewlap that hangs from their neck and the males will show that off, be defensive, and try to attract females. And then the last one, frills, is really a great example from the frilled lizard that has this really cool collar. Again, that is mainly to make them look bigger and scary. The next adaptation I want to talk about is subdigital adhesive or gecko feet. <laughs> Geckos are able to stick to the wall using molecular physics called van der Waals force. Um, this is done by creating these little suctions from the structures that are on their feet to the surface of their enclosure. When looking at the gecko's foot, you'll see these lines. Those are called lamali, and then they also have these microscopic hairs called setae, and that is what helps them stick to their enclosure, or latch, or a wall, or a tree, or whatever they want to stick to. <laughs> The last thing I want to talk about is brill, or also known as a spectacle, an eye cap, or an ocular scale. All snakes and some lizards have this, so basically instead of eyelids, they create this scale or this piece of skin that covers their eyes, and it is shed off when the rest of the body sheds. If your snake is going through a difficult shed and the eye caps are still attached, it's not necessarily an emergency, but it can eventually lead to vision impairment, um, damage to the eye, or potentially it can lead to a source of infection of bacteria again under that scale. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as click that notification bell so you can be informed of brand new videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching!